नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल अ वेरी वार्म वेलकम टू ऑल आवर व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू आवर फोर्टी सिक्स सेशन ऑफ द विरासत टॉक प्रोग्राम बींग ऑर्गेनाइज बाय द आर्कोलॉजिकल एक्सप्लोरेशन एंड एक्सकवेशन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ द हेरिटेज सोसाइटी पटना आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल आवर व्यूअर्स टू शेयर द लाइव लिंक ऑफ द सेशन विद योर फ्रेंड्स एंड कलीग्स सो दैट वी मे रीच आउट टू मोर पीपल इन आवर एफर्ट to promote and create awareness regarding the rich cultural heritage of our country it is my great pleasure and honor to welcome and introduce dr kanti kumar anand pawar sir assistant professor at department of archaeology deccan college post graduate and research institute pune dr pawar will be speaking today on the topic rock art in india antiquity and continuity without taking much time i all her deadly welcome you sir and would now request dr pawar sir to begin the session first of all namaskar to all the viewers students as well as uh, many senior uh, that the my colleagues maybe they are watching with uh, watching to me first of all i would like to take this opportunity to thank heritage society patna that the, for such a great endeavor that uh, they are organizing such a vast uh, variations of the topics by the different different scholars uh, different different that the faculties from the different academic institutions in india it is really great pleasure to see uh, the some societies are working like that i am thankful to them heritage society patna that today i got the uh, they invited me to give a brief informations on the what i have on the rock art in india the topic which i have chosen today that is a rock art in india antiquity and continuity the topic particularly that the the chosen that is to focus on the different aspects of the rock art in india no doubt that the various aspects that, that is knowing to the scholars but this is a some of the field that the even though many common man or you can say that the layman they are not much aware about the particularly the stream of the archaeological uh, the facets that is known as the rock art the antiquity part which will be dealing with the how the rock art and their various uh, the classifications which appears as well as the continuity in the traditions by the present ethnic groups so i am covering these uh, these are the some of the aspects in today's my this speech so i would like to give my presentation through my powerpoint which uh, some of the slide would help you to all the viewers to give your suggestion your inputs maybe your questions and along with that the virtual what you can say uh, that the, uh, the pics and all it will help you a lot so i am starting to share share my the screen now i hope it is visible to all the viewers as already i discussed that the my topic that is a rock art in india antiquity and continuity about myself already introduction have been given but i am working as assistant professor in the deccan college most of you know that the institution which are based in pune working in the sector of this ancient indian history culture and archaeology itself now coming to the point of the art rock art no doubt it's a one of the important part but what is art basically so here that the for the common people it need, needs to know that the very there are the various definition of the art there are the various facets of the art likewise if you can see that the mitra what he quoted is that one art is a beginning of culture the beginning of human existence together itself also art is a human creative skill or its application art is a creativity of human mind which appear on the any forms of the panel oblique canvas likewise art can appear appear on the rock art sir art can appear on the metal itself art can appear on the paper itself but visual art is an expression of human experience it articulate the artist concern through form color composition at the same time communicates with the viewer at the different level resulting in multiple readings likewise for this point i must i would like to explain is that one whenever we go to see some of the exhibitions some of the paintings where are the various art drawings or you can say that the art paintings which are exhibited over there most of the times those the for the those viewers that the art paintings or you can say those kind of the objects of the art they are speaking themselves it is a kind of symbolism it is a kind of the communication between the viewer as well as that the object itself 
so it is not the simple example of the depiction of the something over the panel but it is the example of the creation in which that the artist want to speak want to communicate with the viewers itself maybe genre after a lot of generation that generation doesn't matter but continuously this symbolism or you can say continuously this communicating with the viewers that is one of the maybe main concern of the artist that is why it is said that the, it is expression which comes through the human experience itself a work of art therefore provides interesting data for analyzing and understanding the social context of its creation which would otherwise be completely missed in the normal material cultural studies likewise for this this also we being archaeologists we excavate many sites we excavate that the and we find out many artifact many eco pack on the basis of artifact and eco pack we try to rebuild our history we try to reconstruct our past which are the in a non verbal form but art unlike that the in other form that art that the, it gives you the understanding about the social context which easily you cannot obtain from the material culture which we excavate from the site itself i am not saying that those are not helpful for the reconstruction of the past but art is directly helpful for you to understanding the contemporary social uh, uh, the context as well as it helps to understand the analyze of the that type uh, the uh, uh, the then community they which created this art it is almost certainly futile to try to pinpoint where or when art first developed this is again the very big question that the when it was developed there itself there is perhaps not even a hard and fast division between art and art like production as well as that the activities we hardly do that the distinction between that one what are the styles as you know that the may we heard at the styles various schools that the which have been developed various the art school which have been developed what, what are these basically styles the styles is itself it's a the distinguishing manner of the person or the school or a period in a creative skill which was a develop by individual develop by the institutions develop by the school itself that is why it is converted into different styles in the present scenario you will find the study is mostly remain the object centric and that is why it is need for a study from art point of view also the object centric study uh, i am not here focusing that the object centric study is not good it is definitely that it is worthy as well as it is very very important but a study which understand through art point of view is itself a very very important to give the supplementary view to the object centric study now how the art have been developed right from the earlier days so for this this table might be helpful for everyone is that one art as i it's itself in a earlier slide i discuss is that one it is a individual artistic creation but how this individual artistic creation comes how it is comes on the panel how it is comes on rock how it is comes on the paper there are maybe that the, these are the kind of the artistic creation can be that the comes through a person through a school through the inherit or you can say that the learned experience one of the best example of internationally known warli art now it is by the generation to generation inherit experience it comes to the warli generations so that they are help they, this kind of the idea help them to depict it again and to open for the market itself also sometimes it is individual creativity as well as skill itself innovation word innovation when we use the word innovation innovation word itself comes from the individual creativity sometimes creativity is a fusion of the different styles as well as individual skills so the skills and individual creativity which comes through our brain which comes through our cognition it helps us to uh, produce our artistic creation what kind of the production can be comes through this artistic creation 100% the pro our artistic creation can produce a object this object may be having a different facets likewise object may be a functional dimension which archaeologists can excavate and found in form of artifact also object can be of the stylistic di dimension so these all are depends on that the artistic creation through this this object appears and by bygone eras that the we are getting continuously in the uh archaeological site historical site which are buried inside of the land itself as well as we are getting on the panel on the rock itself now if we can see the object which have been created and they have functional dimension and the stylistic dimension if you can go to the prehistory or you can see if you can go to the prehistoric era you will find that the different kind of the objects have been produced one of the 
everyone knows that the object that is the stone tools then bone tools ornaments in the different media uh, medium as well as that the rock art so these are the various object which were produced in the prehistoric era itself and it is continuous even though in the present scenario also except that the in some uh, most of the context that is stone tools itself but these are the object which are the continuously legacy which you can find in the different ethnic groups in india as well as that the outside itself coming to the era when that the metal has been invented in the calcolithic period that the we are finding this object in different forms we are finding a pottery which include the including the paintings we find the different art as well as that the art object itself we find the ornament and the other material itself also we find the dwelling structure itself even though if you can see the dwelling structure might you heard about the site bedana and many more likewise neolithic site of burzum and all even though dwelling structures also have a some kind of the form some kind of the designs oval circles etc etc so this all which comes through the artistic creation of that the human kind coming to the point of the rock art now what is the rock art and how it is that the express through the viewers or how it is communicated to the viewer rock art which is served as a universal expression and communication of human thought of the prehistoric times it is right from the prehistoric times we are getting that the different arts activities we can find on the panel which is known as a rock rock art usually found uh, sorry rock art has profoundly influenced the beliefs and the artistic convention of subsequent societies to the present day and it is that the right at the at many points likewise when we talk about the socio behavioral phenomena we understanding the social aspects we understanding the behavioral aspects even the being archaeologists being the historians that the many people try to find out that the past societies this socio behavioral aspects art also that they it influence the belief as well as artistic convention of the subsequent societies and that is continued up to the present day itself rock art may also be viewed as a means of communication and symbolism likewise take a one of the best example is that one this is for that that, that those my all viewers that they, those may be from the common field those not not from the history this one of the example is that one when we were child we will just that the try to understand this view world we just comes that the to this world and after one year or something like that when we were not knowing a language we couldn't speak something as most of us have been observed that they through the symbol through the that kind of the direction our parents try to give communicate uh, communicate to us the symbolism itself is a matter symbol are often considered as a material representation of abstract concept sometimes the symbol for the larger concept also some smaller symbols are very very important for that one. that is why early art from where highly abstract they were highly abstract in nature the risk of interpreting its meaning and function in a subjective way is very very high now interpretation of uh, the particularly aspect it depend on the person to person for the one object or you can say for the one instance for the one event there may be the lot of interpretation and this interpretation is also a part of the our cognition itself which are really uh, depend on our neuro aesthetic activities rock art in india when we try to understand what kind of the rock art there were the india and what kind of history of research that we can find out if you can see the history of research of this india india is one of the three countries which having the richest treasure of the rock art in world the other two being that is australia and is a south africa saudi arabia and brazil also appear to be very rich in the rock art so rock art is not only that the just confined to the india but this rock art the art which we can find in the rock art which we can find in the rock shelters that these are continuously in the many other countries also rock art site and complexes which are found generally on the plateaus and hill slopes and tops in the valleys and the gorges having rock shelters and caves and open rocks also so there is not necessarily that only rock art can be found only inside of the caves itself rock art can be found on the open rocks itself rock art can be found inside of the rock shelters rock art can be found inside the caves itself rock art is found in two forms that is iconic and non iconic now this is a good this is for the information to all the viewers is that one that the rock art just like when we can see some art some art may be iconic some art may be shape some art does some arts may having shape some art some arts may have the form but some of the times that we can find that the art 
which you can find in the non iconic form also so they doesn't have the proper that the uh, dimension that doesn't have the proper shape sometimes that doesn't that the looks like that the, it is giving some kind of the figurative art in simple word iconic and non iconic it means that figurative and non figurative and has been created in the rock surface either by additive techniques now what is the additive techniques by applying pigment on the rock such as a different kind of the rock paintings which we can find or by reductive technique by bringing out something from the rock it is known as a engravings such as the different kind of the petroglyphs executed by the different process likewise the deep engravings carving pecking scratching as well as that the brushing techniques so these are the two different forms two different techniques which have been used to understand the rock art of india as well as that the outside itself now as i said that the rock art can be found in the rock shelters so this is the just view for the viewers that how uh, that the shelters have been found in that the big this uh, uh, the environment inside of the forest inside of the high altitude likewise this is the example of the satpura hills in the central india then some of the shelters are like that that the inside inside of the shelters you can find this activity of this rock art sometimes this rock art activity are created just like even though here you can see with the help of this arrow that the art activity is found in a such a that the ceilings in which that the normal human being cannot be reached easily over there so this is again the question that the how they have gone over there whether the particularly the uh, the platform of the uh, rock shelters were up to the, this or in the latter days uh, that they it has been created some other activities and been created different questions are there coming to the rock art about the classification as i told you as i just mentioned is that one rock art can be found in the pre figurative form that is known as a non iconic as well as figurative that is known as a iconic pictographs it means that the rock paintings right side of the slides you can see here is that one that the paintings the red color paintings which have been depicted on the panel of the rock then second classification that is the petroglyphs petroglyphs again sub subdivided in the engravings carvings pickings scratching as well as brushing itself likewise in the in this slides you can see here is that an engraving this is a brushing sometimes you will find out the scratching itself over there sometimes carvings are also there the map may be helpful for viewers to understand that the in indian subcontinent that the where majority of the rock activities are there most of the rock activities you will find in the central india up to this day there are the more than 5000 painted rock shelters have been found so far so this map which showing with the help of this uh, symbol that is a main area of the petroglyphs and main areas of the rock painting itself so you will find that the rock art is continuously activity right from north to south and east to west in different states about the history of this rock painting so you can say history of the rock art so first discovery or you can say first on paper reporting which was done by one of the britisher known as a acl carlay this was the first ever discovery which were done in the mirzapur district sohagi ghat hills this was way back to the 1867 which was a 12 years before the discovery of altamira then rock engravings which, which was again first time discovered uh, also reported by f facet in kupagallu that is in 1892 and rock brushing by h knox which was in a karnataka as already mentioned up to this date there are the more than 5000 painted rock shelters have been reported from indian subcontinent but their major concentration is itself in the central india now another very very tough task in the archaeological field about this rock art site that we have been almost down now celebrating more than 150 years of this rock art discovery but as far as excavation is concerned very few sites have been excavated up to this date if you can see that the 43 sites have been uh, excavated in india that out of which 32 are in the central india so central india is one of the major hub of the findings of the rock art numerous scholars those who have been work namely all of you know padma shri late dr vakankar sahab <coughs> sorry uh, uh, dr ashodar matpal sahab tagi sahab narayan vaidji professor gurgiraj kumar and many more many more those who were contributed with their discoveries 
in the central india as well as coming to this part of the south india you can have a numerous name like the dr sundara then dr rajan dr chandramouli then further south you can go to the dr ajit kumar and many more so all this contribution of this numerous scholars resulted a many more discoveries in a different part of the country itself now major components of the rock art if you we need to understand what are the major component of the rock art when we try to understand the rock art here so subject matter in the rock art usually you will find in the human figures form that is irrespective of gender and age and second one that is a non human form non human form is usually that the depicted through wild and domesticated and animals bird amphibians etc then what are the scenes which are common uh, these are from the bimpetka the figures are from the bimpetka so different scenes are there likewise hunting scenes you can find out inside of rock art then battle scenes you can find cultural scenes you can find family scenes also sometimes you can find other things which used to depict likewise the collecting honey men's with luggage old man drinking from pipe vessel etc etc so these are the numerous scenes which you can find through the different different rock art in different different parts of the country itself now sometimes you will find that the uh, mythological that the depictions also in the mythological depictions it appears the god goddesses and the mythological animals also sometimes even though we confuse as well as we have question in front of us that the, does really such kind of animal were existed because paleontological studies as well as zoological studies they have never confirmed the identity of such animals but those kind of the animals maybe it is irrespective of exaggeration or irrespective of the methods style etc but we can find inside of the rock art itself among the symbols many times the symbols are the geometric other symbol which including the swastika triratna sun concentric circle etc so these are also the symbols which you can find apart from that the ancient artists they have left their hand prints fist prints fingerprints fingertip mark etc also you can find inside of the rock shelter itself about the material culture in the material culture also it has been depicted in the numerous rock shelters likewise take example of chaturbhuj natnala bimpetka your mirzapur and many more rock art sites they have shown the various varieties of the weapons utensils sometimes the masks even the clothings also ornaments musical instrument huts and the houses and other depiction also which comes in the material culture about the nature also this is very interesting topic for that the, those who are doing a botanical studies paleo botanical studies that this several trees have been appears in the rock art along with the bushes grass flowers as well as that the leaves in the decoration in the latter days you will find the alpana decoration geometric motif and in the miscellaneous sometimes you will find that the inscriptions also which are the painted as well as that the engravings also now what kind of the styles usually we can get there are the various subdivisions of the styles but majority of that one that the varieties of the approach are there likewise in a natural approach four major styles you will find that is a silhot then the decorative partially filled as well as that the outlined also silhot is a style in which you will find out that the in the lighter surface that the paintings have been drawn in that the completely filled styles whereas the decorative you will find that the much ornamentation or you can say the decoration over there partly filled as well as that the outside it's out, outline also geometric approach is there sometimes you will find that the panel is completely carved or sorry carved or you can say painted or with the this geometrical figures geometrical figures where it can be the triangular lines wavy lines circular and many more as well as as i told you the early art which were the existence of that the abstract in nature so this abstract approach also you can find out over here just like here some of the examples to understand you with the outline drawings is that one these styles various styles are there decorative styles then these some scholars they called it as x ray styles also so various styles of the rock art this is outline you can find inside of the rock art itself now what are the composition of this rock paintings as well uh, rock paintings usually we can find in the rock painting which we called it as a petro uh, pictographs also each each figure is usually almost complete in itself there are also groups of the figure which from their arrangement may be said to have been intended to depict scenes in such scene figures were painted one after another at one time and most by a single artist 
The rock wall, which looks a big canvas at present, was used for several thousand years by artists of the different periods. That is why sometimes, even though in many, in many rock shelters, we'll find out that the one panel were used by the many artists. That is why word superimposition comes. But even though in many cases that the different artists have been taken care of the existed art, that is why they, we didn't find that the earlier existing art also uh, could be harmed by the, the, the next artist which comes and which occupied those cave shelters in the latter period. <coughs> and the latter artist never tried to erase the older painting. In this way, search for composition of figures in such canvases is not always easy. Nevertheless, adoption of new style, use of different colors and superimposition of figures helps in distinguishing several phases of artistic activity and in demarketing groups of figures as individual compositions. In general, the rock artist has wisely used the irregularities of the rocks to minimize his labor and create impressive effects. In executive single figures, he was free to draw them to desired size and direction. Free from foreground and background restraints, not governed by the laws of the perspective and horizontal, eye level and ground lines, not bound by the grammar of light and shade and aware of any kind of ism, the rock artist drew figures of his free will. Four types of the composition usually you can notice in Indian rock painting, that is individual figures, long panel like a Chaturbhuj Natnala, panel covering the entire wall surface, then small groups of the animals as well as the human figure system. Now coming to the classification that is the pictographs. The pictographs, as I told you, those you can find in the form of the rock painting. So this is from the central India, the Satpura Hills. Here you can find out the zoom ops which have been depicted on the panels with the different animals. Likewise, here you can see the different varieties of deer along with the rhino. This is the rhino. Then the long neck animal, maybe it's an exaggeration that is a different issue. Then the beer and many more that the animals have been painted or have been depicted on the single wall, on the single panel. One of the main thing for the viewers that the, we need to understand that the understanding of our impression to the identity, identity of the animal sometimes misguided us. So that careful observation is very, very necessary. Cross checking is also very, very necessary. Likewise, take this example of that one. If this speaker, you can zoom out this figure, you will find that the, the proportion of the body and proportion of the neck, it is a completely mismatch. Likewise, sometimes it looks like the giraffe. But paleontologically, it is not been proved that the giraffe could be there in India because we didn't have any single evidences of the giraffe bones in India itself. But the figure looked like that the, some long neck animal which were the existed in it, India itself. Now, there are two things. Whether it is an artist exaggeration while drawing the paintings, he exaggerated that one. So for this, the comparison of the other figures is also very, very necessary. So this is a really that the awareing fact as well as minute observation, which needs to understand the ancient rock art. Or sometimes that the misguiding concept as well as misguided interpretation can be done, which can harm the academic aesthetic. Sometimes the figures are the so big and so life size. Likewise, take an example of this scale. This scale is around one meter. So you can see that the length of the one single animal which were depicted over there. This is wild boar. So this wild boar, which is depicted around the one meter of the panel, which were occupied by uh, during the depiction of that one. So this is really interesting to understand the cognition, or you can say the cognition level of the ancient artist. Varieties of the figure, as I told you, likewise in the, this figure, you can see here is that one, the depiction of honeycomb, then depiction of turtle, concentric circles. Here again, the life size, the depiction of the fish, the rock shelters, which now those who are that they found in a, such a high latitude. So this sometimes gives us the impact that the such kind of the life size fish that the from where they have found or how they have visually accepted is that one and they created as well as depicted over there. So various depictions you will find in the rock, uh, in form of the rock paintings. Coming to the petroglyphs, as I mentioned that the petroglyphs also have a several subdivisions, likewise engravings. So this is a recently, uh, I have worked in the Tiger Sanctuary. This is an extension of uh, international known Tadoba, uh, famous Tadoba Tiger Sanctuary. So this is the extension of Tadoba Sanctuary. It is located very near to Nagpur. 
so recently we have done the work with the government so this kind of very much fascinating that the engravings we found as well as we reported inside of the jungle itself so you can see here is that in picture itself that the varieties of the engravings there are the varieties of the symbol including the animal figures including the some of the mysterious figures uh, the tiger uh, elephant etc etc those who are that the cow this is known as the engravings the deep engraving inside of the uh, surface in the rock then some engravings are that the some carvings are the very light just like you can see here is that one this is again located in the region of the central india that is in the vidarbha part so on the floor of that natural floor sometimes you will find such kind of the engravings these engravings also depicted various subject matters this is one of the huge cave so on the right wall of the caves such kind of engraving in which the star human then again the leaf and the fruits have been engraved over here uh this is one of the early historical caves in the entry of the early historical caves you will again find that the that the one of the figure which is the engraving on the left side also the brushing in some of the caves sometimes you will find that the game boards game boards are the made with the help of the brushing itself is that one also sometimes the inscription just like downward here you can see this is known as the shankha script or shankha lipi so shankha lipi and shankha script which is common in central india and it was engraved much later so here careful observation must have been done by the viewers as well as the scholars itself while studying this one they should be careful that the, there should not be co uh, relevance between the caves as well as that the existing arts existing art may be in much of the latter period itself but cave can be existed in the earlier period too then another very very important and much debated topic of the rock art which is existed in indian subcontinent that is the cup marks this is known as again part of the petroglyphs cup marks can can be found right from the prehistoric times up to the present day itself likewise this is the cup mark which is on that the megalithic boulder then this is the cup marks these are the cup marks which are in the naturally that the naturally uh, natural cave then this is the open air site from where from here you can collect lot of microliths as well as that the some of the handaxes and all so this sometimes in the open air sites also you will find that the such kind of the cup marks have been found itself then this is again another example that the which is in the vidarbha part that the this may be a sundial because exactly uh, that the 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 quadrantal circles are divided in the 12 12 12 uh, the cup marks itself so i am not going much detail of the, uh, this one but here the idea is to that the share with the viewers is that one that the while observing the cup marks cup marks cannot have a one meaning it cannot have one interpretation it cannot have a one dimension right from the lower paleolithic times that the we have identity or we have identified the cup marks itself we are finding of the cup marks itself darki chatta on the site which were excavated jointly by dr giriraj kumar and professor uh, robert bednarik they have proven on the basis of the different dating methods they have been used in the uh, that caves that the cup marks in india that belongs to the lower paleolithic period but how and in which shape that the that the cup marks have been drawn that is also very very important just like take example of this that the, this is a randomly that the cup marks have been executed or they have been carved over there there is no pattern whereas if you can see here is that one in the megalithic site there is a cup, there is a pattern just like two cup two in a each row uh, two the, the line of, that the which consisting eight or nine cup marks and same way the two lines have been made so this is the understanding that whether those cup marks have been drawn in a some pattern or randomly it has been drawn how it has been drawn those all are the different aspect which has been very very important it may be the much long topic here is that one so i have to encompass the different aspects so i am not going in detail of that one but this is for you as as well as the student that please observe minutely please observe carefully while studying this cup marks activity likewise we try to understand that this sundial so called sundial sundial with the one of the article which is published uh by this antony axeni that the in which that the, he tried to understand the cross petroglyphs in which he said and he proved that this is the ancient mesoamerican astronomical and the calendrical symbol itself 
then sometimes this cup marks find in a such a way also this is a one of the huge or you can say the gathering of the cup marks we can find inside of the tiger sanctuary almost more than 700 cup marks at the same time together and almost a dimension of the one cup marks is around 30 cm to 40 cm so this kind of the cup marks are always raise a question that whether they have just a non figurative or there whether they have just a some of the meaning also likewise here just to try to just give you clue i am not saying i am proving something but in the right side figure if you can see here is that one in this cup mark if you can that the uh, maximize the figure you will find out that uh, there are the rusting inside of that the cup mark itself as well as the dimension of the cup mark which shows that this is cup marks have been used for just a pasting something or you can say just a crunching something what kind of the objects or you can say what kind of the use of such a used cup marks maybe over this area this area is still very very important in the herbal medicine point of view and if you can observe this carefully this cup marks you will find out that the some stone have been continuously rolled over there there is a one of the ancient science which is known as the alchemy science which is present in one as siddha very few that the what you can say that uh, the traditionally that the people are continuing this science or you can say they are following the idea of the siddha in the siddha there are the one word which come as a ashmabhuti the ashmabhuti the or you can say that the uh, raksha or you can say that the powder of the stone this powder of the stone is very very important because as you know that stone which having a different minerals if you can crunch or you can say if you can just grind this herbal your medicines along with the stones so automatically the minerals or you can say that the metal content which is available inside of the stone it can comes while grinding of that one and this can be a one of the this can be one of the maybe the issue while that uh, the ancient artists or you can say those people those who executed this cup marks in a such a kind of that the large stone this is a drone view so just you imagine with the drone view how many cup marks are there and how they have been used why they particularly chosen about that the such kind of the site itself now coming to the issues chronology and the dating of the rock art various issues are there so these are the question which i put forth in front of the viewers as well as those who are the senior scholars so how we understand this rock art how we understand the different issues which is related to the rock art one by one if you can see that the why some paintings are confined in a specific portion of the shelter if you can see many time the painting are confined in a specific portion not in the random portion most of the times paintings are even the painted in a such a position in which that the present day you can go only by crawling you cannot even the sit over there why it is so why some paintings at lower or higher level on shelter ceiling or on the wall just like in picture i have showed you why there are the cluster of the painting in a shelter you will find out the some of the shelters it is not fully painted but only some of the clusters they have been painted why the ancient artist selected only a cluster of that one why there are certain spots with a large number of superimposition not the other spots why a certain type of painting is confined either to a particular portion of the shelter or in a shelter or in a region itself that is known as a regional variation that's like sometimes some kind of the symbol or some kind of the painting you will find in that area only not in the other area only so whether it depend on that the group whether it is depend on that the artist this is again another question why certain unusual type of the painting in a unusual shape of the shelter why certain paintings or cluster of paintings are oriented in a specific manner why certain small shelters have paintings whereas large shelter have either small paintings or no paintings why certain shelters along forest track have either specific types of paintings or painting in a particular orientation and many more such kind of the question that a student of the rock art can be raised to his or in her own level itself about the chronology i am not going in detail of that one but as you know the late wakankar he had divided the paintings in a different periods likewise on the basis of green and dark red color he said that the the painting belong to the first phase that is a he name period 1 that is upper paleolithic then he followed the period in the mesolithic in which that the compared to the paintings become the uh, smaller in size 
Then period three, he divided. He said about the chalcolithic, in which many common motif, which is found in the ceramics, which appeared in the rock art itself. Period fourth and fifth, that is the historical period, appearance of the different gods, goddesses, as well as magical, uh, that the figures which appears over there, decorative styles appear over there. And finally, sixth and seventh period, that is a medieval period, in which the geometric, linear, and more schematic, but uh, regeneration of that artistic styles have been found. So this is a complete, this is a division which made by the late Vakantar sir itself. No doubt, we can challenge, we can challenge, we can understanding, we can get the awareness on the basis of our own ideas, on the basis of our own understanding. Now, dating of the rock art is again another very, very major issue. In the archaeology of land wind, where is easily we can excavate the site, easily we can get the organic matter easily so that we can date it. But how to date the rock art? Rock art studies which started in 1867 and now it is almost completed 150 years. But dating is the most vital issue still lacking in the Indian rock art. As I mentioned, 43 sites have been excavated in India. Relative dating including certain parameters which appears by the, which appears as well as adjected by the various scholars. Likewise, iconography, style, technique, excavation, proximity, attenuation, and weathering and superimposition are widely applied in Indian rock art studies. But absolute or direct dating is still lacking in this regard. Understanding a traditional and relative dating methods that you can understand this art by different different perspective. It may not be, it may not be, again, I, I must specify myself. It may not be apply, it may not be applied everywhere, but it can apply in some of the Indian rock shelters where you can hardly superimposition. Likewise, iconography. Understanding this picture of domesticated animals and metal weapons, you can clearly understand that the, these are the paintings which were the latter innovation and the people who were familiar with this innovation. Likewise, if you can find out the metal weapons, 100% the paintings are belongs when that the metal appears. Like take an example of the harpoon. All of us know that the harpoon appear in the much later stage. After Neolithic time, the Calcolithic era, this, this appear. So this is a clearly understanding by the iconographical understanding also. Style, rock paintings in India are numerous and the narrative, but uh, this theme based studies create a multifaceted picture of the technological and social condition prevailing during the time when these pictures were created. Painting in different style considered as a different periods allow us to categorize the picture of hunters and gatherer and picture of agricultural and cattle keepers. But at the same time, various styles have been used. You can differentiate the hunter and gatherers, you can differentiate the agriculturists and the cattle keepers. But sometimes that they, even though in the present day scenario also that the, in many ethnic groups that the paintings are almost same. So the stylistically, it should be one of the careful examination while dividing these paintings and attaching your stylistic parameter to this painting. Technique, understanding technique during execution of pictograms or petroglyphs, that is also very, very important. Just like in case of the cup marks, as I said. You can clearly, minutely observing, you can understand that the, these cup marks have been done by the stones or these cup marks have been done by the some weapons. When weapons have been used, when the iron or you can say some metal have been used, you will find out that the edge of this cup marks or edge of these petroglyphs are so, uh, what you can say, so intricately that the, this design. Whereas in case of the stone, you will find out that the surrounding depth is not too much, but in the centrally, you will find that the much depth. So these are the some of the volume, then the nature and understanding. This one can apply under uh, while studying uh, the petroglyphs. Maybe it is engraving, maybe it is a uh, your cup marks itself. Excavation, where rock art is covered by sediments, concealing strata may consider as a post dating cover rock art. One of the best example that is the Darki Chattan, as well as you can take example of the Bimpetka itself. There is no dating available from auditor and came of Bimpetka itself. But Indian Asulian is generally thought to be the same antiquity as that of the Africa and the Europe. Superimposition, this is more likely to be valid for the understanding art execution. Obviously, that the ex earlier existing painting could have been the could have been the ancient than the, the latter existing painting over there, superimposed over the existing painting. Indian rock pictures are often placed one upon another. In this way, we only have to observe their sequence and relate the different layers of the paintings to particular style sequence and so as to arrive at what chronological sequence of the style and themes. While the painting closest to the rock sulphur considered to be the oldest, 
the successive picture will be gradually younger but there is no way of telling how much time elapses between the successive layer of the painting this is again the big lacuna to understand this parameter proximity sometimes rock paintings accompanied by inscription that are chronologically known helps to date the absolute way only a very few rock pictures are dated and these are mostly pictures inscribed with the dates from the known era but contextual approach or proximity about other picture is not valid always many of us that they, they try to correlate the associated material culture with the art activity but it may be the false what you can say is sometimes it may be the false understanding also there is a possibility that the associated material culture could be the oldest and there is a possibility that the uh, the paintings are executed in the later days also absolute dating of the rock art coming to this point the result of the there are the hardly absolute just a minute absolute dating of rock art is important for scientific study but it is very complex process likewise ams dating is most popular method for dating in an archaeology and sometimes for rock paintings also it needs only a few milligrams of carbon coming from the organic matter in the pigment but datable carbon is difficult to derive from pigments of indian rock painting so far india very few attempts have been made to date the pigments of the rock painting in order to know about the contents of the pigment and to establish absolute date by employing <coughs> scientifically advanced dating methods and technique the result of the first attempt still remained awaited whereas the second attempt has been successful as the dating of the rock art is getting momentum in many of this many of the countries india is still far behind and need to use the technological innovation of the improved dating methods for the first time in the uh, publication it is mentioned is that when ak sharma who excavated the painted rock shelter of rock art site in madhya pradesh tried to date the rock paintings scientifically by collecting the rock paintings pigment although he succeeded in getting information about the organic contents of the pigments getting the result of absolute dates of the rock paintings of ziri is it remained awaited the second attempt which was done by the bidnori and the later on that the, they collected the pigments from the different sites some of the different uh, other other attempts like from bimpetka jamzori and the hatitol also those are located in the raizen districts uh, these are the some of the dates which appear from the bimpetka then uh, your jamzori then hatitol as well as that the jwalapuram so if you can see that the dates are not much older when we can say that the paintings are older like was 10000 bp or 15000 bp but the dates which have been come up that the dates some they are not going beyond their 5000 bp likewise they have come from the jalapuram itself so there are the some of the lacuna or you can say there are the some of the still we are lacking behind in the dating techniques also so some of the other dating techniques may be entering uh, may be helpful to understand the supplementary views of that the earlier or you can say carbon dating methods likewise tl osl radio carbon analysis of mineral accretion radio carbon analysis of inclusion in accretions or the lichenometry these are the some of the different dating methods one needs to try to understand the antiquity of this rock paintings antiquity of this rock art now coming to the continuity part as i said rock art in india now we have already discuss about the antiquity of the rock art let's go now to continuity of the rock art so legacy of this rock art in the present communities in india have highlighted the different issues here i am giving you some of the little information what i have likewise many more communities many more ethnic groups many people call them a tribal communities likewise you can say the mundas gonds kolam korkus santhals orans so uh, many more groups are there that they which are which still practicing the art and these art are popularly known as that their, their, their own tribal art itself likewise take a example of the warli so this is one of the herds from the warli residential resident so as you know the warli paintings now it has been that the worldwide famous it internationally recognition got to the warli painting so this kind of art activity you can find in their house coming to the santhals santhals also they sometimes decorate their houses like this painting then mundas if you can go to the mundas of jharkhand and this uh, hazaribagh specifically area 
the mundas also depicted their herd their houses with the such kind of that the mud wall uh, mud wall with the masak painting gonds those who are the one of the largest group in the central india and even the gondwana name appears on that one so this kind of the gond art you can find out there residential huts now these are the present day dimension of the art but what could be the linkages or you can say what could be the scenario which connect between the ancient art as well as the present art so for this that the we tried to understand this by the interesting study which were carried out few years back in the satpura uh, range hills or you can say satpura hills in central india there is a one village the, this village were undertaken for our study very interestingly we got this evidences of the continuity of the rock art which i just wanted to share you briefly over here the people of the village known as the gonds community the gond community that they every diwali time they used to go inside of the shelter so this is a very very interesting for us being archaeologists that we got chance to cherish this moment in which that the gond community from village they goes inside of the rock shelters and they painted of that one so understanding socio behavioral phenomena is very very important here so how they goes what they does this briefly i just wanted to show over here likewise procession to the rock shelter every diwali time these gonds they just process from their village and they goes towards the rock shelter with the singing dancing in a such a ways then inside of the rock shelter that the the shaman or the pujari or you can say bhagat that is the different names which has been called so inside of that one that the he uh, sit inside uh, inside of rock shelter him try to uh, try to make the some of the symbols and he just started puja over there again there are the dancing and uh, the singing process are going on then after that that the, the these people this gond people they draw uh, some symbol inside of the, rock, uh, the in the panel of the rock shelter without harming without harming the ancient symbol itself this symbol known as a godani godani is a combination of two word that is go and dhan this is a cow and wheel so they depict this godani symbol as well as the, the some animal symbols also just like so you can see in the picture in the same rock shelter you can have white paintings inside of the shelter where the one small stone have been worshiped by these gond people then they come back to the village where the next day they perform the gothan puja this is known as a gothan puja again the next day that the some place have been selected <coughs> in this place they just dug out uh, likewise uh, this kind of the the portion they just dug out the person who went over there with the singing and dancing so they just laid that person over there and through his hand they just uh, give the worshiping to the nature god itself as you know that the most of the ethnic groups they do not have the the idol worship they all are the nature worshipers then they are considering is that one the this flute which they carried out inside of rock shelters and then coming back so this shaman they he try to understand the magical this treatment to the deceased one and then the the person who went inside of the shelters and they just coming back he take them inside of the village itself then the next day that they as you know that the, this all this process which is related to the godani as i told you godan that is a cow well the idea behind is that one that they with this process that the, they are all cow wells are to save from the evil being as well as that the wild animal itself so this kind of process which is known as a gai khela i am not going much detail in, in, uh, here because shortage of the time then the, there are the different depictions of the godani you can find in the present day of their wall itself and these are the depiction this is the first depiction is inside of the shelter this is one of the the past symbol which is drawn inside of the shelter itself these are the present day symbols now when you do the comparison it is not like that the only i can found this thing in the satpura this is continuously in the varieties of shelter you will find this thing in jharkhand also this is the bimpetka you can see the same godani symbol which having a four points at the four corner quadrangle figures this is all the same and this is almost the similar figure that the which you can find for the comparison itself so the continuity of the rock art which is still continued in the present day scenario present day some of the villages by the some of the ethnic groups but again there are the irregularity irregularity of this continuing this process because of the financial constraint because of the day to day that they are accepting this modern culture so traditionally these people also going 
away and away from their this traditional source of understanding here ethno archaeologically i am not saying that the, this kind of the study are are completely helpful to understand the the idea behind the existing or you can say depiction of painting but it is helpful you to understand the socio behavioral pattern it is helpful to understand the present day cognition to understand why this kind of the figures have been drawn over there why the present day ethnic groups are drawing a figure drawing a symbol inside of the shelter what is the mentality behind that one why they are depicting the same symbol over here what is the mentality behind that one so this all mental cognition or this mental understanding is very very important to understand the creation of the art because when we are creating something there is attachment of our, our brain itself with that one with this words i must thank you or to all my viewers uh, maybe if i go very fastly and not focusing on many issues because of time constraints and the, i encompass the vast topic over here in the shorter period of time so you can have some suggestion or the question or any relevant questions or any relevant things uh, related to that one so you can uh, mail me my email id kantipawar@gmail.com so thank you thank you so much thank you so uh thank you so much sir for the very enlightening lecture today uh let me at the end of this session let me extend my vote of thanks to everyone present here i azadin gulshan nanda on behalf of heritage society and its large family that includes more than 80000 of active followers from different parts of india and abroad i would like to express my profound gratitude to our distinguished speaker dr kanti kumar anand pawar sir for his wonderful talk today i am extremely thankful to you sir for accepting our sincere invitation and presenting a talk in our today's session i also thank all our annual members followers and our virasat mitra of heritage society for their unconditional support and love for our endeavors i am also thankful to our beloved audience who were live today in our virasat talk program thanks to durgananda tiwari sir ambika ambalika jacob ji santi swarup sinha sir sonia kansal ji sivaroni ji and all our viewers it's not possible to take everyone's name here but our sincere thanks goes to all of them i would also like to thank our beloved dr ananta astos tuvedi sir for and uh, sri manita pandey ma'am for the uh, for their support and guidance in organizing the weekly academic talk program i also express my vote of thanks to all the staff and officers of heritage society for organizing this enriching session i request all of you to stay tuned with heritage society for many more such lectures in the coming week thank you all thank you sir